Hey everyone, this is Karen with Big Cartel Support Team and I'm going to show you how to add products to your Big Cartel store. First up, you'll need to log into your admin and once you're logged in, you'll click the tag icon here in your admin's navigation to get to the product section. Then click the plus button to add a new product and you'll see the new product form. Now we've made the product form pretty straightforward. All the fields are labeled so you know exactly where all your product information needs to go. And I'm going to start by adding my product's name to the product name field. All right, next I'm gonna pop over here to upload my images. And it's a good idea to be prepared with your product images and info before you head to your admin to add your products. That way you can get your new products including all their images and info added in one go. So click the plus button to upload an image. And I am on an upgraded plan so I can upload five images per product listing. And I've got a couple close-ups and some model shots, so I'm going to go ahead and use them all. Now the gold plan, plan excuse me, allows one image per product. So if you've got a lot of images too, you may want to think about upgrading so you can take advantage of those additional images. You'll also want to make sure that your images are no bigger than 10 megabytes or you'll get an error message that you've exceeded the file size limit. So your store will let you know if an image is too big and if you need to resize it. I've added my images, but they're not set in stone. So maybe I don't like the order that I've uploaded them in. I can simply click the images and drag them around into a new order. Or maybe after upload, I decided I don't want to use a particular image. I can simply click it, click the trash icon, and it's gone. Moving on to price, just drop your price here in the price field, super easy. Now, if you're struggling with pricing your products, maybe you're not sure if you're charging too much or not enough, then head over to our blog at blog.bigcartel.com and check out our article on product pricing. And we've got articles that cover everything from marketing on social media to product packaging to preparing for your store's launch. So you'll find a lot of helpful info on our blog. I've added my price. So next up is my product description. It's important to use clear, concise language when writing product descriptions, since they're not only visible to your customers in the storefront, but they're also used in SEO. So you might be tempted to get really creative, maybe a little overly in depth with your product descriptions, but that won't help your customers find your products. So ideally you'll wanna to stick to using language that really describes your product well and does so in a concise way. So I've got a product description ready to go. I'll just drop it in here. And there it is. I've got information here that's pertinent to the product and that I think will interest customers. I've got where it's printed, a brief description of the graphic and the sweatshirt's material, and I've included a bit about the graphic and the text on the back of the sweatshirt too. Moving down to categories. Adding categories to your store and sorting your products into those categories lets your customers find what they're looking for more easily. And it's also a great way to let your customers see the range of your product line without them having to scroll through all your products to see whether or not you carry a particular item, which is gonna be really handy if you've got a couple hundred products listed in your store. So to add a category, just click Categories. And I've got some categories already added here. So I'll assign my product to sweatshirts. But maybe I have other products with my brand's name or logo on them, like patches or totes. So I'm gonna add a new category to my shop that I can assign all those products to. To do that, just click the pencil icon to manage categories. Click the plus button, and then just drop the name here in the categories field, excuse me, category name field. There we go. Now you can see that my new product that I'm working on is automatically assigned to that category when I save it. Now while I'm here, I can also delete categories. So maybe I've decided not to sell pins anymore. I'm going to click the pencil icon again to manage categories, click pins, click the trash can, and it's gone. While I'm here, I can also rearrange the order that my categories are in, and that'll change that the order they're listed in in the storefront as well. So to do that, just click the category name and drag it around into a new position in the list. Then save, and done. Now we're going to look at status options. And whatever status you assign a product determines basically what your customers can do with that product listing. If your product is ready to ship, then you can leave it as active. And when a product is active, customers can see the product in your storefront, add it to their cart, and complete a purchase for it. Now hidden is for products that aren't ready to go on display yet. 
Maybe you don't have the images ready to upload or you're still working on fulfillment or maybe it's part of a scheduled release that you're currently advertising so you just don't want your customers to see it yet. Well, you can mark the product as hidden and your customers won't even be able to see it because it will not display in your storefront. Sold out is exactly that. The product is sold out. Now this will let customers see the product in your store because it will display, but they will not be able to place an order for it. So they'll see the sold out text, but they didn't get one in time. So they're out of luck until your next product release. And coming soon is similar to sold out in that your customers can see the product, but they can't purchase it. And you can assign your products that status if you want to give your customers a sneak peek of what's coming up in your shop but they won't be able to place it until you change that status to active. And then when you've done that, your customers will be able to add it to their cart and head to checkout to buy it. I'm going to mark the sweatshirt as active though, so we can see how it looks in the storefront when we're finished. Next up is options. Now here's where you're going to add your product options and you can add sizes, colors, lengths, whatever applies to your particular product line. If you're a photographer and you sell prints, you can list different sizes of your prints or you can list framed versus unframed prints. If you make jewelry, you can list the various metals that you offer a particular bracelet or ring in. So I'm going to add my options and I'm going to list size and color together. You're given one drop down for options. So you'll want to combine multiple options to make it easier for your customers to choose what they want. So I will start with small gray and I'll work up from there with my sizes. And let's also salmon off with some red. And if you do make a mistake after saving it, don't even worry about it. You can go back in and make whatever changes you need to the options, to the price, to the description, images, anything can be changed. Now the default in stock number over here is one, but that can be changed to reflect the actual inventory you've got on your end. So let's say I have 25 of the small gray, 35 of the medium, and 30 of the large, and then you can just go down your list and manually adjust that as needed. And that in stock field will only show up when inventory tracking is enabled and inventory tracking is available with the upgraded plans. I won't dive into that today since it's a topic that we'll have a class on in the future for a more in-depth walkthrough. Heading next to shipping. Now, shipping is another topic that really needs a class all its own. So I'm going to show you today just how to add basic shipping fees. And then in the future, you can check back with us for a more thorough look at shipping. So click to add shipping, click the country field, and you'll see a big drop down of countries. Your home country should be first. Since I'm in the United States and I wanna offer domestic shipping, I'm going to choose the United States. Now, let's say it costs me $5 to ship this sweatshirt. So I'm going to put $5 in the alone field here. Now, let's say someone wants to buy two sweatshirts. Well, I've already got the box and I've already got the packing material. So it's not gonna cost me that much more to just add another sweatshirt to the box. So I will set the with others rate to $2. So that'll make shipping cheaper for customers who are ordering more than one item. So with this particular setup, customers within the US are gonna be charged $5 to ship one sweatshirt, but they will be charged $7 if they purchase two because the system is going to add the alone and the with others amount to calculate shipping. Now I also wanna ship internationally and I have a couple options here. So click the plus button, then click country, and I can choose this everywhere else feature at the top. And that will allow customers from all over the world to place an order in my shop without restrictions on their shipping address. But maybe I only want to ship to my neighboring countries and I can do that as well. Click the country field and instead I can choose individual countries from this list and add shipping just for those countries. Now, if I go that route, my store will let customers know if they're outside of my shipping region hey, we're so sorry we don't ship to Antarctica if I haven't added shipping for Antarctica. And one word of warning, if you do select everywhere else, that includes literally everywhere else in the world. So if you want to ship to Antarctica and everywhere else in the world, then you'll choose that everywhere else option. Now, since it's going to be more expensive to ship internationally, I'm going to charge more for shipping to cover my costs. So I will set the alone rate to $10 and we'll do the with others rate to 5 now, before I save my new product, I'm gonna scroll up and make sure I haven't missed anything, check my spelling, make sure I've uploaded my images and they're in the order that I want. 
and then we'll click save to add it to the shop. And there we go. I've added a new product. Let's click back to products and there it is. Super easy. Now, what if I've got several products that have similar options or shipping? Maybe I have a t-shirt that I offer in the same sizes and it costs me the same to ship as the sweatshirt. The admin has a handy feature that lets me copy an existing product and that makes adding new products even easier. So just click the product that you wanna copy and click the actions menu here and click copy product. You'll notice that everything except the product images and name are copied over, so that needs to be added. And we'll upload an image to represent this product as well. And while you're in here, you can adjust the price, the description, whatever you need so that it reflects your new product. But we'll just go ahead and save it. Click back to product, and there they both are. I've got the t-shirt and the sweatshirt now listed in the admin. Now the admin has another handy feature that makes updating more than one product at a time really fast and easy. Let's say that my international shipping rates have changed slightly and I need to change my product's shipping to reflect that change. To do that, I'm going to click the actions menu, click bulk edit, and you'll notice that my product images are grayed out. And that's because I need to choose which products I'm going to update with this bulk edit. To do that, just click the product and you'll see this little green circle with the white check indicating that it's going to be included in this bulk edit. The actions menu is turned green and there is also a count indicating how many products I'm about to update. Click the actions menu, click to edit shipping and you'll see my current rates. So let's say that internationally I'm going to have to charge $13 for one and let's do $7 for each additional. Whoop, there we go. Click save and you'll see, yes, two products were updated successfully. Now, while I am in here, I can also make changes to the status, to the category. I can even delete a bunch of products in one go. But I'm finished editing, so I'm going to click to close editing. And here we go, my sweatshirt and t-shirt still here. Let's click into one of them. And you'll see that the international rates have changed according to my update. So let's go back to products. All right, now, what if maybe I change my mind about a product listing, or maybe I've sold out of those t-shirts and I just don't wanna print another run of them. I can just delete the product listing altogether. To do that, just click the product, click the actions menu, click to delete the product, confirm, and it's gone. I still have just the Get em Tiger sweatshirt. Now let's see how that looks in the shop. Click to get to the home page, products, and there it is, the Get em Tiger sweatshirt. You can click on that. You can see all the different images here. You can click through, you can see the price, the name, the description. You can click the drop down to see what sizes are available. You can click to add it to the cart and then head to checkout. So that is it for adding a product to your Big Cartel store. Thanks for watching. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to hop over to our help site at help.bigcartel.com or you can email us at support at bigcartel.com. And if you're logged into your admin, you can click the speech bubble at the bottom right to send us a message that way and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks again for watching and check back with us soon.